Hello, Clinic Area Chamber of Commerce members and Bay Area Houston. We are excited. Our 33rd annual Business and Wellness Expo is coming up on August 19th inside the Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Nassau Bay. This is an opportun opportunity for you to showcase your business, goods, and services. And this year, we're also going to add a job fair. A lot of our businesses tell us they are in need of employees, and we're going to help you out. For more information, go to clearlakearea.com. All right, welcome to another episode of Clear Light Connections, where we talk to the people behind the businesses in Bay Area, Houston, proudly sponsored by UTMB Health. So today our guest is Dr. Jared Caruso with UTMB Health. Hi. So tell us what you do at UTMB Health. Uh, thanks for for uh, inviting me uh, first our pleasure uh, yeah so I am the uh, I'm the director of the pediatric emergency medicine uh, at the Clear Lake campus okay and tell us what that involves and 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 kind of the kind of the spectrum of, of what it is that uh, your department handles on, on a daily basis um, well uh, first off it's 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 new uh, so uh, having a, a pediatric emergency medicine specialist in, in this area and at a uh, at, UT, at a UTMB facility is, 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 is something, you know, very novel. Um, so uh, we, uh, we started this in, in probably the end of February uh, uh, 2020, uh, right before we mm -hmm. were hit with, uh, with COVID. And, uh, and then uh, over the last year, we sort of been growing that program. Um, we have a, a number of uh, physicians that are pediatric emergency medicine trained with decades of experience and uh, pediatric uh, nurses that uh, have come from various different children's hospitals with also decades of experience and uh, and our, our charge really is to provide children's hospital type of care to children uh, in our community and and so do you think because we talk a lot about buying a bay area and 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 what a great community we live in it were you able to attract people that lived in this area to come work in this area was that was that a, a a way that you brought some of that experience into into the in, into your division? Some of the physicians were already here, uh, working at either at UTMB or some of the other children's hospitals in the area. We've also attracted some physicians from outlying areas, uh, and I think uh, they're enjoying their experience and hopefully they'll 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 stay with us. Uh, but in addition to that, we also, since we've, we're growing, it's been a year now, uh, and uh, our volume has increased. I think the word is starting to spread that, that we're there, uh, and I think that's all it takes because I think families do appreciate the fact that they have specialists to see their children if there's an emergency. Um, and uh, we're starting to recruit some, some, uh, some of the doctors from some of the surrounding children's hospitals. Yeah, and... and when you're dealing with children and, and you know parents I remember w one of my children fell one time very toddler face ballooned up and just the, the the terror as a parent what types of what are you seeing on a on a on a daily basis what are the the main types of uh, uh, injuries maybe that you're seeing and maybe some advice for people because as a parent you're terrified but these kids are actually really resilient, so maybe you could dive into a little bit of when you should go to the emergency room or, you know, maybe when you don't need to visit the ER. Because I know ERs, they get clogged up, and, and, and you want to mm -hmm. avoid that because you want to, you know, they're there for that reason. So if you could speak to that a little bit about, you know, advice to parents on when you think uh, that that trip to the ER is probably necessary and when maybe they could, you know, wait a day or so or, and, and talk to their family physician. Well, I think that most of the families in our community have a primary care doctor, uh, and then most of the primary care doctors have um, some sort of system where you can call them after hours if it's not during you know the weekday or office hours, in which you can get some advice. So that's probably the best thing to do is to speak to you know a specialist, speak to one of the office staff or one of the nurse triage lines, and then they can direct you to what you need to do. It, can it wait the next day? Do they need to be seen immediately in an emergency? In a, in a mm, I'm gonna have to edit that. <laughs> you want to want to stop or just keep rolling? No, just keep rolling. Okay. Uh, whether or not you you need to be seen in an emergency setting mm -hmm. or an urgent care setting. 
Yeah, and, and so that that's great advice. And now that you mention it, I, I do remember my, my wife calling the pediatrician even after hours and, and kind of getting some direction. During the summer, what what, what types are th- uh, uh, injuries, accidents? What, what are you guys seeing that people should be aware of, especially, you know, as hot as it – I mean, we're, we're literally in the hottest part of the summer right now. Well, the, the one injuries that uh, – that we're particularly concerned about during the summer really is it's water safety uh, 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 injuries, uh, submersion injuries. Uh, and um, I'm particularly passionate about talking about that because it's something that is preventable. Um, so getting the word out uh, about water safety, uh, about how drownings are a significant problem in the pediatric population, uh, and, uh, uh, and some advice on you know, how to prevent them. And, and go, ahead, go ahead and give our audience some of that advice, especially, you know, it's, it's the height of swim season. And, uh, but I guess drownings, it doesn't even have to be swimming. It, it could be any number of, of ways that that happens. So what, what advice do you have? What, what would you tell uh, all the parents out there? Just having someone designated to watch the children. Unlike sometimes what you see on TV, drowning is oftentimes uh, quiet and calm. There's not a lot of thrashing about. There's not a lot of noise. Uh, children just tend to go under, and it can happen very, very quickly. So having someone designated to sort of watch the children, like while they're in a pool or a lake or a beach or a bay or whatever the body of water that they're swimming in, and have that be their primary job, and educate them that drowning is oftentimes quiet and calm, and to know when to intervene. Why is that? Why? 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 It, is it children just react differently to to that circumstance or it's not just children it's okay. adults as well okay yeah yeah uh, but the other important feature here is just prevention making sure that if the child is young enough to learn how to swim and we usually recommend that children by the age of four are ready for swim lessons um, so that's always a good thing to do having the appropriate floatables um, floaties on their arm or life jackets when they're in and around a pool or a body of water is important. Um, and then, of course, if you have a residential pool, to make sure that it's gated. So even off-season, because children sometimes can wander out of the house mm-hmm. and fall into a pool. Uh, so having that gated uh, is, a, is an extra security feature. Yeah, and, and when we put our pool in, you're right. I mean, we, we felt comfortable because our kids did know how to swim. But I, I've, I've always found it remarkable how many people never learn to swim and then they'll go to the beach or, you know, they'll step into water where, you know, up to their chest and, and they, they, they can't swim. And all it takes, like you said, apparently it's, you know, TV makes it look dramatic when it's actually, like you said, very quiet. And the next thing, you know, that they're, they're off. And um, I, I, I think you know, and boating is another one where, where people don't necessarily pay enough attention uh, when it comes to, to the, the safety aspect, especially the life, life vests. And, life jackets, yeah. yes. And this is kind of the boating capital of Texas, and uh, so we probably see a lot, of that, a lot more of that than we need to. Uh, what other types of summer activities uh, do parents need to monitor that, 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 you know, to make sure that their kids are staying healthy and safe. Another simple thing to do is just make sure your child is protected from the sun. Bring them in and out of the sun at periodic intervals, uh, making sure that they're wearing, a, you know, a cap or a hat that sort of covers their face, mm-hmm. um, sunscreen, and, and sunscreen with appropriate SPF, 30 or above, and uh, making sure they reapply it, too, because especially when they're in and out of the water, yeah. they need to reapply. Yeah. So, uh you started this program, I take it. You were you were the the first director of this program. That's correct. And you started right as COVID hit. And I th- I think you guys have been very busy at UTMB putting in new programs. And it sounds to me like they all started at about the same time. What was the first six months like? You know, when 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 COVID hit. Well, it was interesting. That first month, we 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 had some volume and we were all excited about what's going on uh, and uh, and the fact that we were there and that the community was starting to realize that, that we were there uh, and then COVID hit and uh, it didn't really affect the pediatric population at first so we saw our numbers really plummet uh, as far as the number of visits that we were seeing in the emergency department 
Um, also, we went through a respiratory season uh, last winter in which we really didn't see the respiratory illnesses that we normally see during the winter because people were practicing social distancing, they're wearing masks, they're washing their hands. Mm -hmm. um, and it's amazing to see the effect of that, uh, not just on COVID, but all these other respiratory viruses that we see. Um, but unfortunately, this summer, with the demasking, now we're seeing an uprise. And all those respiratory illnesses that we missed over the winter, we're seeing them now. Um, so they're back. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, we're also seeing the Delta variant of the COVID-19 uh, virus, which is affecting children more than the initial outbreak did. Hmm. Uh, so we're starting to see children who don't have the opportunity to be vaccinated uh, getting ill with this illness, and then some of them requiring hospitalization, and then some of them requiring intensive care unit hospitalization. And so you have all that available at the, the Clear Light campus? So at the Clear Light campus, we have the emergency department, and then we have a beautiful pediatric inpatient unit, uh, private rooms, beautiful view of the area. It's on the second to the top floor. Um, and up there, it's run by a group of pediatric hospitalists, pediatric nursing staff, UTMB physicians uh, that are in training. Uh, and in addition to that, all the subspecialists that you can imagine mm -hmm. are available uh, to come and consult. Yeah, and, and like you said, you've, you've filled a need in, in the Clear Lake area. You know, I, I remember when my kids were young, we had two hospitals to choose from. And it was a roll of the dice, which one was going to be busiest. Uh, are you seeing your numbers pick back up? And, and the number of cases you're getting, are, are, are they across the board now that we're kind of back to kind of full normal operation? You're seeing things that you, you know, you, you kind of expected uh, during this kind of time. We are. Uh, and then some. Uh, normally during the summer, we usually have like what I call a diastole. So it sort of slows down a little bit for us in, in, in pediatrics. We don't have those respiratory illnesses that we spoke about earlier mm -hmm. uh, during the summer as much as we do during the winter. Not the case this, this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, we're, we're very busy right now. Uh, so it's, it's all hospital. kinds of respiratory I issues that, that people get caught up in. It's, it's mm -hmm. obviously not just COVID, but asthma, things like that. that, that yeah, we're they, seeing this virus called RSV, a respiratory syncytial virus. Uh, we're seeing an outbreak of that right now. We have a smattering of some influenza cases as well. Okay. And uh, what do you, so a normal year for you is you're, you're actually busier normally during the winter because of that than the summer. So in, in the summer, is it more accidents, that type of thing, or would those types of uh, uh, cases come come to your your facility yeah accidents infections soft tissue infections exacerbations of asthma okay and uh, so you're you you're a year and a half into the program what kind of is your vision for the what the program will look like in the next three to five years I would I would really like to have uh, a, a, a hospital in, in, this, in this area, in Clear Lake area, that people recognize has children's hospital services, that they actually have what the big children's hospitals have downtown Houston. They mm -hmm. have that out in their community. Um, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and I think we already have the resources that we need to provide that service. It's just a matter of getting the word out. And I'm thankful to have this opportunity to speak with you to help get the word out. Yeah. Um, because I think once the, once the community recognizes that they have this sort of level of care here, um, that uh, the uh, the volume will, will increase. And then with that, it allows us to, uh, to have more resources as well with an increase in volume. Yeah, we, we talk a lot on, on, on this podcast about buying a Bay Area and keeping things local. And it sounds like what you're trying to do is give people the opportunity to have all of these services locally without the need to, to drive into the medical center, for example. Uh, uh, so that, that's, I think that's, a, that's, that's definitely a, a worthy ambition, and, and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that you've uh, started this program. So any, anything else you'd like to add for the audience before we... Uh, part? Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, going back to school soon. And um, 
And as you know, the, you know, the pediatric population is not able to get the vaccine. So uh, I'll be interested to see what the you know, local school districts are, are going to come up with in regards to how to keep the children safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but first thing is prevention. So uh, as an adult, you know, if you have an opportunity or if you have an older child who's over 12 years of age and is eligible to, to receive the vaccine, get vaccinated because uh, that's the number one way to prevent the, the infection with, uh, with COVID-19. Um, the other way to do it is, uh, is what we did this last winter with social distancing and, and wearing a mask. So I would expect that when children go back to school, they're going to follow the CDC guidelines, the American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines that are recommending that when children go back to school, they mask, they practice social distancing, the school has a, a process uh, for reducing, you know, infections, uh, cleaning, proper ventilation. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you. And again, thank you for bringing this valuable service to the Clear Lake area. Uh, it's like you said, it was much needed and uh, we appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks so much.